the Arabian Peninsula, an ancient land of illusion. where searing desert sands never stop marching. While sun-baked mountains rise like inaccessible fortresses, the unforgiving heat appears to sap life from every corner. Yet, tricks of the light and the art of deception are the fabric of life. Mythological beasts are said to roam here. Plants appear to bleed. Nothing is quite as it seems. This is a place where myths are born, but wildlife faces the harsh reality of survival. Arabia is the world's largest peninsula. But this hasn't always been the case. Some 30 million years ago, it was connected to Africa, driven by forces in the Earth's core. The two plates separated, creating the Red Sea. Today, Arabia is covered by over two million square kilometers of punishing desert. At its center is one of the largest bodies of sand in the world. Rub al Khali, the empty quarter. This sea of sand the size of France is so hot in the summer that few dare enter. Yet Arabia's hostile guise hides a land of diverse ecosystems and more than 500 different vertebrates. To find them, you have to look beyond the searing heart. Modern-day borders have split this region. In the south, Oman is a wildlife hotspot. Heat still conjures a merciless environment. But the Jidda Desert is where a miracle has turned myth into reality. Legends talked of unicorns roaming Arabia's deserts. The Arabian oryx nearly became as mythical as these beasts. Once hunted to extinction in Oman, 1982 saw them reintroduced to the wild. Tagging and monitoring has helped numbers rise but surviving the jitter is still tough. Temperatures can reach over 50 Celsius. And some years there can be no rain. Native to these deserts, their white coats reflect the punishing heat, while dark markings under their eyes reduce the sun's glare.
But to find water, they have to smell it on the wind. Traveling huge distances, they can go longer than camels without drinking. However, some females are carrying young. Finding nutrients to support one is hard enough, let alone two. As the cloak of darkness falls, a new spell is cast over this land. Tentatively testing the air for danger, a jerd emerges from his burrow. Having awoken from his daytime slumber, it's time to feed. Related to the gerbil, he's one of the smallest mammals found in the desert. However, appearances can be deceiving. He's able to jump distances three times his own length. And will vigorously defend his food from competitors. He wins, but his troubles aren't over yet. A horned viper is also searching for a quick bite. But she has a different trick. She will seemingly vanish into thin air. Camouflage helps her ambush, but in Arabia's deserts, the Jerd is a master escape artist. Sunrise reveals another illusion of this land. The mountainous dunes of Oman's Wahiba sands are constantly moving. Driven by the elements, they travel around 10 meters each year. Unable to move, many trees drown in these shifting sands. Morning winds are beginning to pick up. Animal tracks tell the story of the night before, yet these will soon disappear.
cool, liquid-like dunes allow the Arabian sand boa to escape the heat of the day. Eerie sounds reverberate across the shifting sea. The Deathstalker scorpion must also keep moving. With poor eyesight, it uses the comb-like structures called pectines under its body to build up a picture of this environment. However, as darkness falls once again, not all of Arabia's sands are stirred by the climate. Green turtles use the cover of Arabia's night to dig their nests. The depth and position is critical. It needs to be deep enough to protect the helpless eggs, but it also determines the sex of the babies inside. Closer to the sea, and incubation will be cooler, producing more male hatchlings. Further up the beach, the eggs will be warmer and they will hold more females. Having incubated for around two months, a clutch laid earlier in the season, begin their epic journey. Darkness provides a cloak of safety as they follow the natural light of the horizon to the sea. Arabia's dawn first breaks on the eastern shores of Ras al Han. As the last expectant mothers return to the sea, predators take to the skies. They comb the beach for any hatchlings that didn't escape under the cover of darkness. With sunrise, hunters have a greater chance of finding food. Within minutes of surfacing, a late youngster races for its life but is totally exposed. The lure of scavenged eggs distracts the birds from their quarry. And gives the youngster a chance to make a break for it. The equivalent of a human kilometer to the water's edge. Yet with estimates of only one in a thousand making it to adulthood and facing the uncertainty of the Arabian Sea, his greatest trick may be still to come. Arabia's coastline not only sees ocean legends return, but is said to harbor mythological beasts.
the dugong is thought to lie behind the legend of ocean mermaids. Sailors once likened them to these sirens, hence their family name, Sirenia. Though not renowned for their looks, they move gracefully through Arabia's shallow waters. Like the seagrass meadows they feed on, these gentle mermaids are rare. Yet Arabia is believed to have the second largest population. Feeding exclusively on vegetation, he uses his flexible upper lip to rip out whole plants, leaving furrows known as feeding trails behind him. Harvesting the grasses like this, they actually help cultivate the beds, encouraging new growth that oxygenates water and provides a sanctuary for young fish. As storm clouds form overhead, he can carry on grazing safe in the knowledge that his shallow water home will protect him from the rough seas. Each year, between April and September, the Indian Ocean monsoon winds bring sporadic rain and thunderstorms to northern Oman's al Hajar mountains. in eastern Arabia, they form a spectacular wall that rises from the surrounding deserts. Arid mountains hide a 2,000-year-old secret. Buried deep underground, man has discovered a power at their heart. Water. It's dispersed throughout the valley by an ancient system known as the Falage. Watchtowers were built to defend the water system and a timetable of irrigation was introduced. The old timings were dictated by the sun and stars, and the bounty of this is still being grown today. For the date farmers of Oman, it's harvest time. The perils of climbing shouldn't be underestimated and they learn this from a young age. These trees not only provide the farmer's bounty, but are also used to make the baskets and rope he scales it with. Date palms are considered the most important fruit crop in Oman. A good harvest would not only represent the fruits of his labor, but also that of his father, and possibly his grandfather before him. The annual yield of a single tree can reach 270 kilos. It's estimated Oman produces 50,000 tons of dates each year. enough to fill 18 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Sun drying preserves these high yields of sugary fruits. Humans aren't the only ones to reap these rewards. Honeybees have set up home and helped pollinate the oasis. 
an opportunity the blue-cheeked bee-eater isn't going to miss. They nest in colonies, and bees provide an offering to females. For both the wildlife and the people, water casts a life-giving spell. The arid mountains reveal a hidden ecosystem in this man-made oasis. The mountains in southern Oman play their part in this land of illusion. Rising to over a thousand meters, it's here that dragon's blood flows. Dragon trees are said to have sprouted from the blood of a hundred-headed dragon. Slayed by the Greek god Hercules, it's their red resin that has given rise to this myth. Yet the key to their survival is no illusion. Waxy skyward pointing leaves are designed to catch the faintest trace of moisture. Densely packed crowns also provide shade to the tree's roots reducing evaporation of any water droplets that fall to the ground. With its roots in legends, the tree's blood not only forms a protective barrier, but is also harnessed by medicine for its healing properties to this day. Legends have also helped protect Arabia's riches. Dragon-like creatures were said to guard this mountain's treasure and would readily strike out at any intruder. But this is a journey he has done many times and his feet bear the marks of this brutal escarpment. The Boswellia tree also takes on this punishing mountain and hides his bounty. Frankincense is what he's after. It exudes as a milky juice that hardens on exposure to air. Its harvest is as ritualistic as its use. Since biblical times, it's been used for incense, medicine and embalming. Weeks later, the resin is now dried and crystallized. He'll keep returning to the same tree over several weeks. The third harvest considered being of superior quality. Its essence drifts over this mystical land, from hostile and humble beginnings. Comes one of Arabia's legendary and magical riches. Flora and fauna both rely on their own illusions and tricks of survival. Oman's Dofar Mountains also conjure change. As the summer heats up, there are signs something is in the air. The ramparts of Jebel Samhan 
tower over southern Oman. Rising to over 1,800 meters, it defends the coast like a fortress. The sheer drop of 1,000 meters gives a rose eagle a lift on the morning's thermals. Within the dried up riverbeds and wadi canyons are colonies of rock hyrax, the perfect food whilst on the wing. Basking in the morning sun, life seems blissful. At around 40 centimeters in length, these furry, unassuming mammals are Arabia's ultimate escape artists. Right now, they have other things on their minds. Breakfast. Living in large colonies, they can spread out to find food. However, water is not so easily available. So Hyrax perform their first act of sorcery and extract the water they need from the juicy plants. These nervous foragers constantly check the vicinity for danger. If the territorial male gives the shrill shriek of alarm, they'll bolt. The Varro's eagle has spotted the Hyrax high-rise and uses the sun to hide its presence. But Hyrax know this game. A uniquely shaped iris allows them to look almost directly into the sun. And the alarm call is raised. Now you see them. Now you don't. The rock top sanctuary provides a network of burrows and their escape. Myth and legend live on in the desert. Yet the realities of survival are hard. Arabian oryx keep moving. But the pregnant female is no longer with them. Having carried her offspring for eight hot months, she has left the herd. However, there is good reason for this. Her calf is minutes old and will rely on her for everything. Licking her newborn helps bonding and gives encouragement. Exposed in the desert, she must get him up and feeding if he's to stand any chance. But it's easier said than done.
Oryx calves face some of their greatest tests in these first days of life. He gains much needed strength from his mother's milk. This will be his main source of nutrition for the next four and a half months. As they and the herd continue their journey in the Jidda. Their future is by no means secure. Once a legend like the unicorn, the Arabian oryx has a fighting chance in Oman's deserts. The sound of silence is soon broken by those on a quest. Sand grouse are prepared for travel. They cover up to 80 kilometers on the wing, looking for a life-giving source. This is no desert mirage, and rain occasionally falls. Isolated pools won't last for long, but sand grouse are nervous birds. They're camouflaged for concealment as they nest on the ground and are constantly on watch. Once one bravely goes in for a dip, others follow suit. They soak up water in their breast feathers. This precious liquid will be taken back to the nest for their chicks. But a rare source of water attracts others too. Fan-tailed ravens aren't always wanted company. They use bullying tactics to keep the skittish paddlers on high alert. It's time for these nervous bathers to find somewhere a little quieter. Waterholes don't just quench thirst. They're also a catalyst for one of the desert's greatest transcendental illusions. Alien-like creatures emerge. Tadpole shrimp are one of the world's most ancient animals. They will wait in the sand up to 10 years for any sign of water. Lying dormant for so long means when their time comes, there's only one thing on their mind. They need to mate. It's a short and simple life, but this cunning trick enables them to live in a volatile habitat. Finding a source of water in the desert has to be one of nature's toughest acts. Arabia's mountain gazelle 
fill up wherever they can and are able to drink two and a half liters in a matter of minutes. But finding food is not so easy. Dotted across this dehydrated desert, the acacia tree too ekes out water. These members of the pea family come heavily armored. A thick woody bark prevents water loss, while small succulent leaves are defended by large razor sharp thorns. But gazelle have found a way to infiltrate these defenses. Longer necks and legs help them to reach and their narrow muzzle with larger mouth enables them to strip leaves. With so many acacias across this landscape, you'd think gazelle could eat all day. However, these trees have another weapon. There's something in the air. As browsers feast on their leaves, an alarm signal is passed between acacias. By emitting ethylene into the air, trees up to 45 meters away are warned of the impending danger. They can then step up production of defensive leaf tannins in quantities lethal to browsers. This sleight of hand stops gazelle from stripping the acacia bare and means both can exist together in Oman's punishing jitter. Subjects are some of the hottest and driest conditions found anywhere in the world. Summer temperatures in the Arabian Peninsula can reach over 50 Celsius. But once a year, the southern corner of Oman receives a natural blessing, a monsoon. As the cool winds blow in from the Indian Ocean, they meet the hot Arabian air. And vast cloud banks are formed. The Dofar Mountains are the perfect height for cloud catching. and a lost world rises from the Arabian Sea. For just a few months each year, the monsoon's cloak reveals a hidden ecosystem. Moist air transforms this corner. Revealing beasts not normally seen in such green and pleasant pastures. For mountain tribes of Oman, this is a time of great change. 
The Jebali take their name from this mountainous region in Dofar. The ritual of morning milking takes place, as it has for generations. A leather cover prevents her calf from feeding on milk during the day and teaches them to graze on solid food. But it's time to get the camel caravan moving. <laughs> Following the monsoon cycle, three generations work together to drive several hundred head of camel up and over the foothills. These creatures hold an important purpose from transport and milk to meat and leather. Yet without this annual flush of foliage, life for these remarkable nomadic tribes could easily disappear, like the clouds and mist that create it. Despite the pastoral calm, wadis have become a hive of activity. A grey-headed kingfisher is going to get an unscheduled bath. Preferring to eat insects, the replenished waterways provide an opportunity to bathe rather than hunt. The cinnamon-breasted bunting is also making the most of the deluge. Bathing is an important part of feather maintenance. Dampening the feathers loosens dirt and makes them easier to preen. But one can't spend all day bathing. This seemingly never-ending haven will only last for the three months of the monsoon. During this small window, there is some serious nest building to do. The architects of the bird world are Rupel's weaver birds. The male spends hours tirelessly designing and literally weaving the nest from grass and long strips of palm fronds. While females will help, they choose the breeding partner based on nest location, design, and relative comfort. Males typically have to build up to eight globular nests. However, they have to use the thinnest branches, overhanging water, to put off tree-bound hunters. The magician of the monsoon is no threat to the weaver birds. He is after insects. The Arabian chameleon uses camouflage and patience. Color change enables him to blend into this now green, leafy world. And a long prehensile tail helps him bridge branches as he moves. Color signals many things. 
It helps regulate temperature, shows dominance among males, or whether a female is interested. But right now, it's a case of concealment while looking for lunch. Remaining motionless, the eyes need to do all the work. Each one is independent. He can literally see both ways at the same time. On spotting its prey, a complex set of behaviors are set into motion as focus information determines distance. Once set, the tongue muscles tense and do the rest. The art of deception enables the chameleon to feast. But as the sun sets, another side to this haven stirs. Weaver birds have finished building for the day. But living in paradise comes at a price. The Arabian cat snake climbs trees looking for prey. At over a meter long, her body is slim and light, perfect for scaling the thin branches. Tasting the air, her tongue reads the chemical traces of any potential prey. The location of the weaver bird's nest has never been so critical. But she's too late and the nest has been abandoned. In Arabia's monsoon mountains, nothing lasts forever. And like the mists that create this paradise, dangers can vanish without trace. The Arabian Peninsula is home to beguiling deserts. And raging seas. Yet, this mysterious land is home to a host of ingenious, elusive, and unwavering creatures. Spells are cast. Myths are destroyed. Legends are born. Appearances can be deceptive in Arabia. Monsoon clouds cloak the southern coast, and hidden worlds are revealed. Tricks of the light are part of the fabric of life. Yet, 
all meet the reality of survival in this land of illusion.